Why? Why? If you Why? have T-Mobile 5G home internet, you might be hearing this Why? a lot. Why? Every time your internet slows down during the busiest hours. Why? Why? Because your network gives priority to cell phone users. Why? Why? Good question. Why not switch to Cox Internet with two times faster download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet during peak hours? Okay. Stop the whys and visit cox.com slash 5G home for details. T-Mobile prioritizes certain T-Mobile phone users over home internet users during times of congestion. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Matinee with Bob and Ray. Good afternoon and welcome, everybody, to another Gay Sturdy. Our last program in 1949. Isn't it scary? Yeah, the last program of this decade, the last one of this half century. The last one in the 1940s. Matinee with Bob and Ray of Public Service, presented by Harvard University. Today's prize-winning script submitted by President Conan. In case we don't get here Monday, Happy New Year, everybody. We'll be here Monday, or else, as you know, we can both be replaced. We can both be counted on to be here Monday. Just remember that if this job is too big for us, we can leave, Bob. And I want to make that abundantly clear. That's what we've been told. And you musicians, though, uh, before I say another thing, I want to thank you all for what you've done to me this year. You remember the first part of the year Ken and Bill introduced a great new song? Ken played it, I believe, first as a solo. We're going back over the highlights of the last year. Sounded just like that last January. That's right, and he's had a year to practice it, but it still sounds just as bad. Hello? Yeah, it's a course. We made a very historic phone call last... Excuse me, Ma Perkins is on the phone, Bob. She wants to know what to do with Shuffle. He's prematurely celebrating the holiday. Give him the weekend off. Take the weekend off. Er, tell him to take the weekend off, Ma. Thanks, Ray. Quiet, Shuffle. Yeah, okay, Ma. Hello, I'm right here, and I'm all right. Uh Uh-oh. Ma Perkins tells me that she's under federal indictment for peddling green lumber from the old lumber yard, Bob. Well, we'll have to wait for Monday to find out what happens to her, I guess. No, we won't. As a matter of fact, she's telling me now. Oh, she is? Yeah. But I can't tell. That would be breaking some sort of a code in radio. Breaking a cliffhanger or something. Incidentally, Cliffhanger, as you all know, friends, is a great musician. Thanks, Ray. And welcome, Cliff, to our program. Well, sir, it's been quite a long while. Wait a minute. I didn't say goodbye. Goodbye, my friend. Bye, Ray. (laughs) It's been quite think? a long while since my first visit up here this year, but it was an auspicious one. It certainly was. And do you want that pivot tooth back? Thanks very much. I'd suggest you don't use the word auspicious anymore. Don't use the word auspicious. Yeah, you don't look good when you say it. You know, oh, okay. you look kind of excited about it. Right, all. Oh. Try some other word like fright. Let me hear you say that. Fright. F R I T E. Fright. Well, you don't. We don't. We're not running. Falderall. P H O L D. No, no, no spelling. What day was our great spelling bee this past year? Oh, that was one great program we had. You all remember our spelling bee when we uh, had some some very talented young men and young the women. The winner here. of our spelling bee was little Harvey Crumlift, who's here today. To Thanks tell, a lot, Bob. Tell us his and amazing Hello, everybody. It's story. grand to be back. What was to the be word? back with you all. What was the word that tripped you up, Harvey? Falderall. And did you finally get the correct spelling of it? Finally, I got it down pretty good. Falderall. F-O-L. Falderall. Capital F-O-L. Hyphen, D, Falderall. Try once more. Small F-O-L-D-E-A, Falderall. P-H-A-O-L-D. Oh, I'm sorry. Doesn't look as if you've progressed much in the last year. I've got a Kimbo down now. A Kimbo? A-K, A-K-I-M-B-O-U-G-H. Right, a Kimbo. Okay, and that's Harvey Crumlift. We'll hear from him in a minute. Juxtaposition, J. Capital J U X. That's a small J. Small J. Juxtaposition. Small J U X. T T A. Juxtaposition. I don't know. I'm sorry, sir. Well, that's all right. You you keep it up, will you? I can't get that. Maybe your spelling will improve. What else did we do? What was another big thing we did? We were at uh, several historic things. Bob and Ray is there. Bob and Ray is there. We presented the famous Battle of Crumlin. Remember back in July, we called in our on the scene reporter at the Battle of Crumlin. June 4th, June 4th, 1530, the Battle of Crumlet. Bob and Ray is there. 
Hold up, steady. I'm speaking to you from my vantage point high atop a wall here on the commanding hill looking over the position where pretty soon the soldiers of the opposing army will probably be riding up. I believe I hear Bob, the band coming Bob down the field me. now, and let's turn down there on the field, see if we can pick up some of this band music. Napoleon's troops are attired in gay red ballet slippers. And also muskets. Excuse me, Ray, for butting in. I believe there's another band approaching me here. Before we, before we, enter, we swing down for that band music part. Before I excuse you, did you have something to say? Yes, I did. I brought one of the commanding generals here to the microphone for you to interview. All right, sir. And your name is what, please? Farmont Farn. Uh, of course, you understand he speaks in another language. Foreign we... language. Foreign language. And we can't understand just what it is he is saying. But we are here. And I believe there's another band coming down the field. Oh, they passed by and we did Excuse me, did this phone ring? Yes, I think it did. Hello. Hello, Ray. Hello, love. Um, <laughs> how's everything? Hello, Mom. You're interrupting. We're running down through some uh, of the, We're running down through some of the great programs oh, of nineteen forty nine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> uh I believe if if you could call back, say a one thirty one or uh, two, we could talk with you. All right. Is that all right? All right, Elizabeth. All right, love. So long. So long. Bob, do you remember the famous broadcast we did from the Red Sox dugout last summer? That was one of them. I believe you handled that. I, I handled turned things that. over to you at the uh, Red Sox park. That was uh, on a historic day, as I remember. Then we also did the final game at the Yankee Stadium mm -hmm. uh, when the uh, Red Sox uh, lost out yes, in that last we game of the Yankees. You direct from the dugout right after that game, and we heard on the spot interviews with several of the. I remember going up to Mr. McCarty and saying, Joe, and he said, Let's <laughs> him <laughs> Then, uh... Oh, all you are one, two hours old, they go, I am And we had some uh, auspicious commercials last year. Excuse the expression. Some what kind of commercials? Well, some big ones. I warned you about that word. Remember we were sponsored by U.S. Steel for quite a long while? That's right. That was awful nice to those folks. It's nice working for them. We just people. didn't sell steel, friends. I don't know why you'd think this program could sell steel. We offered the handy burglary kit for three or four weeks after that. Remember that one, friends, when we sold you <laughs> suction shoes for walking up sides of buildings? Also, together with the first order, you'd receive the Bob and Ray How to Enter the Profitable Field of Burglaring for Fun and Profit. Remember, we also told you of four employees of First National Bank who would sing? And together with floor plans of several national banks throughout the country. Well, that was a big seller and went over great in America. Do you remember how you got that? You simply wrote for it, and it came to you, COD. When the postman arrived, you took $2.98 from him. That started you on your career. Remember that? Well, they're all gone, so don't be writing for any more, friends. Please don't, because we're all out of them. Mary, you had a great, uh, great conspicuous first in the year 1949. Well, my first record came on the market, Bob. Mm -hmm. And uh, it went over just like a lead balloon. I know, I remember that one. That, uh, that teamed up mule train and one of Nick Kenny's great songs. How about giving us half a chorus of Nick Kenny's song, huh? I don't remember it. Well, hum it. I'd like to be a cow in Switzerland Where the skies are always blue Where the milkmaids yodel all the day To their sweethearts miles and miles away Then in uh, September we introduced the couple... Where the... Well, that was enough. These oh, are just right, reprises, yes, you know. Certainly, I'm sorry. Ray and I introduced. Where the... my, my Ray, just sing it over in the. Well, you go over in the corner and sing because Ray and I yeah, introduced the song. Quiet, Mary. Take your hands out of the marshmallow. You remember the one we did, K. Toomey <coughs> song? Do you remember what that K. was? K. Toomey song. Don't you remember that song she wrote and we had and I had such The music was round and round. No, 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 this was the new one. Spanish. No, no <laughs> Ray, that was Higi Kamuko oh. wrote that one. Oh, was I? I know what it was. Let's harmonize. You remember that one? Oh yeah, we did a wonderful job on that. Too bad we don't have the words. We could do it again. We never did. Uh -oh. I tell you what, while we look around for the words, uh, we can, as a matter of fact, they're in Bill Green's private locker, which is conveniently located, friends, for television. I wish you wouldn't leave sandwiches in there so long, Bill. Uh, with the music Bill keeps a small drugstore in there, too. Are you insisting on enhisting, Bill? Do you have any enhist on in there? He has some uh, eyewash there. poses a question. Where, where are they now? I don't know. Well, they I don't haven't know. been with us for quite... We do have Chesterfields. Would you like to... Who's our guest Chesterfield star today? Before we play it, you remember, friends, about several... Several features that we told you about Chesterfield that, oh, that's... that you never talk about, that the people don't know about, probably, that you can that you can take the paper off of Chesterfield, there's a little strip of glue on it, you wet it, and you can hold up little locks of hair. If you put more glue on the paper. Yeah. Of course, you can save the tobacco to put in your pipe. 
But that's, that's another one of those many things that you can do. No, that isn't the song. No, no, that's not the one, Bill. We never did learn that one. Oh, this is called, gee, it's tough to be a skunk. This one we really made popular this past year, though. Why don't they play it? Chesterfield satisfy women and men. Chesterfield over and over again. Milder, much milder, all smokers agree. Always by D.C. Now let's introduce young Dr. Brent. Hi, folks. Seven years old. This year marked a, a, a big thing in Dr. Brent's life because he performed one of his most most dangerous operations. I remember that very well. I, I remember got my own brain. <laughs> I remember that. We were there in the operating room with you. We heard you say to your nurse... Hand me the scalpel, please, nurse. Okay, Doc. Wait a minute. Hold it. Stop. We have a small... Did class. Radio Industry send you over as a nurse? Yes, they did, yes. Did you hear that voice again? Okay, Doc. I don't know. Something about a nurse that talks like they that. They said just... something about you got a small budget up here. I know we've got a small budget, but... And I could be used in the western scenes, too. Can you also play a gangster part? Anything you want. And... Okay, well, then we can use you, maybe. All right, so the nurse sounds like that. That's it. Organ music. Here's your scalpel, Doc. By the way, here's your scalp, too. Thanks. What do you think's the matter with him? Take his pulse, will you? What do you want me to take it? On his arm. Oh, Wait a minute here. See. Hand me, hand, hand, me, hand me up a blotter there, will you? Oh. Okay. I like that red gown you're wearing, Doc. It was white when I came in. <laughs> uh, let's see now. I wonder if he's getting enough oxygen here. I don't know. Slap him in the face. See if he hears yeah. you. Hey, Ow. wake up there. Better give him a little more spirit. Yeah, he needs a little more, I guess. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think he oxygen. stopped. He stopped reading, Doc. Wait a minute. Let's pull up this sheet. Up oh. over his head. Oh, oh. Now let's get out of let's here. Let's get out Come of on, here. Come on, let's run. Come on. For his second offering, our organist, Mr. Wilson, will play... Can't you hear me calling Caroline? Caroline! Caroline! Hey, Caroline! Caroline! Can't you hear me calling Caroline? I want some volunteers to go with me to the past. There's been some dirty work. What kind of dirty work? Laundry. 1949 as well. As well as... The year when we touched serious situations like that involving the return of Little Skipper to Linda and David's lives. Next, Linda Lovely. Written for radio by A. Carrington Love and starring Marsha Van Allshot as Linda, Sherman L. Sturdley as David. Let's turn back the clock to a day late in summer. The small house in River's Mouth the clock is striking three, and David and Linda have just come in from the garden, where they have had a mid-afternoon picnic. David! David, darling! You yes, a... I... I heard you call me, so I... Came. David, would you like cocoa? I believe I'll have a cup, yes. All right, my darling. And... Oh, David, there's a rose in your mouth. I know that. Oh. Pass me one of those... Oh, my Peanut darling. butter sandwiches. David, you're so strong. Excuse me, Linda, you, your dress is on fire. I... Oh, well. I'll help you put it up. There. Thank you, David. It's, it's so strong, my darling. Awfully warm for July, wouldn't you say? Yes, David. Have you, have you heard from Lawyer Tucker? He called this morning. He said Skipper will be coming home soon. Little Skipper but coming David. back home. <laughs> I can't go on. That went on for three weeks, and we didn't require any lines or anything. Then in September, a new character entered Linda and David's lives. Miserable life. Uncle Eugene came upon the scene. Uncle Eugene? It was just at the time when Linda had received a sterling silver imitation ivory love brooch in the shape of a piston ring. Say, Linda, that's a mighty beautiful sterling silver ivory type piston ring love brooch you're wearing there. It was sent to me by an anonymous Who sender. Who sent it to you? An anonymous sender. Why, that is mighty beautiful there on the back of your neck. Thank you. I'll bet all of your friends would like to receive one exactly like it, too. Oh, I don't suppose they could because it's... I only, I have the only one in the world. It's... This little handy locket here. That's a locket, Excuse I Excuse me a minute. <clears throat> 
Do you see this handy locket here? Yes. See what I can keep in it? Stockings. Say, that's a mighty big locket, isn't it? Yes. I used to have a locket like that in high school. Kept my books in it. Oh, Uncle Eugene, you're so strong. Uh, and by your thumbs there. Linda, it would... It would be so wonderful if all of your friends could receive one of these genuine... Wouldn't it be wonderful if the sponsor could make his way clear? <laughs> oh, I... I should imagine they'd be much too expensive, Aunt Linda, to send to all of your many friends who would send a box top and ten cents I cover a, handling and bailing. I have a feeling that the announcer at the end of the program will have something special to say about this brooch. Oh, if, if only he would. Oh, it's too much to expect. Too much to expect, I suppose. Is that telephone ringing? No, it isn't. Then that collar is too tight on my neck. Well, we, we listened a little bit later and heard the announcer make that wonderful announcement. Yes, ladies, get in on this great thing. Be the first one in your neighborhood with a genuine imitation sterling ivory brooch. Be a big wheel in your gang. Remember, you catch it at the back of the neck with a tootsie roll. What else do we have in Be 19- the first member in your crowd to wear this exclusive Linda Lovely brooch. Be a pillow in your society. Pillow. Pillar in your society. What other things do we have in 1949? Well, we were fired once and then rehired. Fired. Luckily, it was on a Saturday and we were back to work Monday. They had forgotten about it. No, but we won't no. reenact those horrible scenes, certainly. No. We, we, we should avoid them. I think we should turn to Ken and Bill, the 385th Field Artillery Orchestra. That's right. The song that received the most requests during the past year for Ken and Bill to play. <laughs> Send them home, it's called. <sighs> Cannon Bill? Say, Bob, hmm? uh, did you happen to see the schedule this morning uh, where it, it made mention of the fact that the Boston Traveler, starting this coming Wednesday, would have... Boston, wait a minute, Ray. I've heard that name somewhere before. Boston Traveler, newspaper. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, now, uh, starting Wednesday, the 4th of January, they're going to have the adventures of, I think, Skip Along Garibaldi. Is that right? I think that's his name, or Jump Along Muldoon or something. Well, I don't know. So I went out and I... Uh, found this transcription, and I thought we could play it and... and uh, Tell the whole story? Yeah, remind time. everyone about it. Okay. So, and I picked out two good men to, to go to work on this transcription. Well, I know, uh, being in the talent business as you have been so long... You see, I have my finger on it all the time. Sure. I have my finger on the pulse of the nation. Uh-huh. I remember one time when I was handling Dave Rubinoff and his violin. Mm-hmm. Come on, Bob. There goes that ornery vomit now. Not me, Ray. I ain't going after him. I'm staying right here. You mean... Yeah, I'm yeller. Come to think of it, so am I. Here, let's hold up here. All right. Oh, hold up there, old tangle. Hold oh, up there, boss. Oh. Hold up. Oh, we ain't got nothing to worry about. Why, wow, look who's here. Hop along. <laughs> Hi, partners. This is your friend Hopalong Cassidy. I've got some good news for you. Starting Wednesday, January 4th, I'm going to be with you every day in the comic pages of your favorite newspaper. And the favorite newspaper hereabouts is the Boston Traveler. If you enjoy my television pictures and my radio show, I'm sure you'll like the new Hopalong Cassidy comic strip. It will be full of fast, hard-riding action and adventure and plenty of thrills. Toppers in it, too. And we tangle with some pretty tough hombres right from the start. I hope you enjoy it. 
Wait, wait for me, Bob. Uh, I want to reserve my Boston Traveler for next Wednesday, too. Won't catch me missing a single episode of Hopalong Cassidy. You did. You did uh, pick two good men for that. <laughs> you know why I won't miss one. Why? would be fired if I did. <laughs> but anyway, I think that that should be real great, Hopalong Cassidy. He's always been a big favorite of mine. Well, Ray, I happen to have seen a few of the advance releases from this mighty interesting Western adventure strip. You did, Tex? What do you think about it? I you... think it's here to stay, and I want to go on record as saying that. Well, anyway, I think Bill Boyd will go to work on his third million now. Well, I think Bill will get along with three squares a day, and all that's what counts. You bet. It's the biggest thing in life. Down here by the old chuck wagon. You said it. Under that western moon on the prairie. Air in the old sneakers. Well, those were the days. Now, why don't we go out west for a while, or do you think we ought to do our... Uh... Oh, we had a we, we had an interesting discovery one time this past year when we, uh, we roamed to the far-off Orient, discovered a program very similar to one that we were used to listening to around here. Remember that one? Oh, I remember now. The Yangtze River Incorporated presents Mr. Lee and his unoriginal Bad Will Hour. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wong. Uh, first problem, please. Ah, uh, my problem is this, Mr. Uh, Lee. Don't mention uh, any proper name or place us, please. Yes. Ah, uh, I've been a pirate on the on the Yellow River. Uh, don't mention uh, proper name, place. I've been a pirate on this here river. Uh, let me I... see if I have your story right to this point. You say you've been a pirate. Yes, and I met this here woman in Hong Kong. I see, yeah. Uh, and, uh... Excuse me, you have a bit of chasu din on lapel there. What? A chasu din on lapel. <laughs> now, continue with a problem, please. And, uh, this here woman, she shanghaied me. Oh, I see. This woman shanghai you, huh? Yeah. Well, and, uh... To make a, a, a long story short, Mr. Lee... Oh, uh, that's all we want here, yeah. I've come I've come for your advice. I mean, I don't know what to do. Uh, oh, I didn't tell you. I shot her. I didn't tell uh, you that part. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Yeah. You have told anybody about this? What, well, you think it crazy? No, no, the cops will be looking for me then. Uh, my advice to you is to get out of town quick. I see. Um, any particular town? I uh, mean... No, I don't want to mention any particular town. Maybe you have relatives you can go live with. Do you have sisters? Yeah, I got three sisters. Patty, Maxine, and Levine. I will suggest you go live. Go live with them. Yeah. Uh, until this whole thing blow over. I don't know. They'd be glad to see me, you know. Uh, I mean, they don't like me, I don't think, you know. Uh, uh, you understand, I cannot give you legal advice on program, though no tongue will be after me. I see. However... <laughs> If you stay and see me in my pagoda after program, I give you a little more advice. Incidentally, friends, if you'd like to buy a Tong War Bond, <laughs> simply send along ten dollars to Tong War Bonds, care of this station. Then we went out west uh, several times last year. We got into hot water two or three times. <laughs> and did we we didn't have either. any soap with us. But didn't help matters. Do you remember the time we made the movie short? Yes, that it was, was about a short two, movie. two or three reels short. <laughs> yeah. It only had one reel, and both of us were hung in that first reel, and everyone was dissatisfied when they went to our opening night at Grauman's Chinese Theater. We had we, fresh cement there, and everyone <laughs> got stuck in the lobby, don't they're you know? They're still standing there. We bring them food. I'm the reminded time. of the great poet Browning, who once said, Any more commercials? No, we've run through the commercials. Well, look, here's another thing. Here's a song written by Joe Candulo, Bob. Oh, yes, sure. And Jack Joyce, and Ken and, Will, uh, Ken and Bill played it earlier. So why don't we sing it? I want to go home with you. Well, you sing it. I don't really know. All right. I don't, I don't know it very well myself. So don't laugh at me, friends. Maybe someday you'll have to sing. This was the big new voice of 1949. Incidentally, don't be... You sitting around uh, radios at home, don't be giggling at me, you know? I'm very tender, you know? Okay. Aren't you going to play? I want to go home with you. I want to go home with you. I want to meet the family I'm sure that they'll approve of me I want to go home with you And nobody else will do Kissing goodnight at your front door Makes me love you more and more You folks ain't giggling now, you never will be this phone ring, Bob. Uh, yes, it did. Hello? It's a lucky thing. Okay, lady. Yes. Yeah, I know. I've never had no train or nothing like that, no. 
Yeah. Thank you. Hang up. Hang up in the face. Thank you very she much, no madam. talent when she hears it. I want to go home with you. Thank you and good night. <laughs> there you have the you big, like that one? big new voice of last year. So get your votes in. Remember, the honest city is Superior, Wisconsin. And the number uh, out there is 717-223-4489. Here, I'll call him right yeah. now, as a matter of fact. Now, this is how you call it. You getting it? You dialing? Yeah, I'm getting it now. Quite a long number. Yeah. It? Yeah, it is. It's longer than we have here in Boston. Sure is. It's a bigger city out there. Yeah. There she is. <laughs> Hello? Hello, is this the this Honor is City? Right oh. Uh is this the right number? I believe it is, sir. Seven one seven seven four two two three four four nine six eight. No, Jay. no, no, that's the wrong number. I'm sorry. Oh, I better hang up. Sorry. Here, I'll dial him again. All right. I'll get him this time. Hello? Hello? <laughs> You got the right number this time. Yes, I want to vote for Ray Goulding. Okay, He's great. Okay, I'll put your vote down here on our master tabulator. Thank you very much, sir, for calling. And master tabulator is standing right beside me. I'd like to have him say a few words. Thanks very much, Bob. Oh, I... Uh... <laughs> That's awful good to be here with you. Well, thanks to have you, master. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> Bill Green, uh... Vidal, the makers of Snickers, presents Dr. O.K., the sentimental banker. So we're taken out of the stage of Lowe's Pole Eye Theater and Last Chance has caught you on. Uh, Dr. O.K., the sentimental banker. Thank you, Mr. Sturdley. Before we get to our questions and contestants for today, let me introduce my assistants here at Lowe's Poli Theater, Last Chance, Saskatchewan. In the orchestra to my right, Ed Sturdley. Thank you, Doctor. In the center orchestra, Ed Sturdley. Thank you, Doctor. In the orchestra to my left, downstairs, Ed Sturdley. I'm not going too fast for you, Doctor, yes, am I? Yes, you are. Down in the balcony upstairs, oh. Ed Sturdley. And now to our first contestant, Thank you, Ed Sturdley, oh. in the orchestra downstairs. I Excuse have a... me, in the balcony upstairs. Oh. <laughs> Hurry along now, please. We don't have too much time. I have a gentleman, Doctor. All right, for that gentleman, Doctor, here's our famous American question. I can give you three clues. Uh, if you answer after the first, your prize will be a portable wall safe. If you answer after the second, a genuine live chameleon from the island of Madagascar. But if it takes you all three clues, your prize will be an electric welding kit. Is that clear, sir? Yes, yeah, sir. The number one clue, I was born. Ah, Ted Williams, Margaret O'Brien, and William Pendleton. Those are good guesses, sir, but they're not correct. Let us wait for your second clue. Flicker. No, Flicker. I'm sorry. I invented Linda. the steamboat. No. Wait for your clues. I invented the steamboat, the electric typewriter. I hung by my thumbs from the Empire State Building for two hours and 45 minutes before dropping off. Who am I? Oh, uh, Grant Volney. Oh, you're right as far as you've gone, sir. I, you'll have to complete his name. Uh, Grant, Grant Volney what, sir? Grant Volney LeBeuf. No, uh, Grant Volney McGee. No, I... Grant Volney, uh... Oh, I'm uh, awfully sorry. Your time is up, sir. I think you'd find his full name to be Grant Volney Jr. But oh, a box of Snickers to that. What size Snickers do you wear, sir? Eight and a half. And your name and address, please. John Kieran, New York 20, New York. See, boy, that about winds things up, doesn't it? Yeah, it should before the cops arrive. The last program and the last series and the last year and the wrong part, a little late, so... Hey, yeah. look, everybody, be real careful this weekend, will you? And be around Monday so that, so that you can listen to us if for no other reason. We'll try to be here. In fact, we will. Oh, well, we expect to be. Ken Wilson played the organ. Yeah. Be. Bill Green played the piano. Jimmy Sullivan was our grand, our grand... You were grand, Jim. Matinee with Bob and Ray is heard every day, Monday through Saturday at 1 o'clock. Remember, if you get work right and hang by your thumbs. Happy New Year, everybody. WHDH in the good old city of... Isn't it? Is it still here? What is it? What happened? Wait a minute, stop. Wait, whoa. Stop the music. Wait a minute, we have to find out what goes on the air here. What goes on the air here, Bob? Regent Cigarettes. Regent Cigarettes. What do you know about that? You mean... Yes, this can mean war. Here, hand me the phone. Hello, Washington. George. Correction, please. Regents do not cost extra. Correction, please. Regents do not cost extra. King size Regent cigarettes are oval shaped for 10% cooler smoking. Yet Regents cost not one cent extra. Luxury smoke. Regular price. Regent cigarettes. First news first, here is the 130 edition of the Herald Traveler News. The United States and the other four members of the Inter-American Peace Committee have joined in censuring the Dominican Republic. The committee has sharply criticized the Dominican government for giving President Ruiz the power to declare...
Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.